why eating meat is bad why eating meat is bad i'm watching these youtube videos yesterday some guy was sitting in the snow built and jacked and he wakes up from the snow it's like some funny skit and he goes inside of his little mansion made out of wood in the forest and he goes and he shows his life it's supposed to be like some amazing life and he shows his food and his food is like ham and sausages all i saw was ham and also probably he's eating eggs so about ham let's talk about ham okay what is ham ham is pigs i i believe but it could be cows so let's just say it's pigs and you're eating those pigs and those pigs are coming in, coming into you and then okay let's let's backtrack now So a pig out there is living his life. It has a name, probably. It feels like it has a name. Or you could give it a name, at least. You could say, hey, pig, this is a Porky. Porky the pig. And when you say, Porky, come over here, it'll come over to you. Because a pig is far more intelligent than a dog. I want you to understand this. Porky, come over here. Oh, look at this nice Porky. We're going to pet Porky. Porky's going to go away, go eat breakfast, dinner, lunch. A pork, I mean, a, a pig lives longer than a dog also. More intelligent than a dog. And yet you can see this because it's food. You've labeled this as food. You've quoted this as food. It's not food. Just like dogs aren't food. I mean, in some insane countries, they are food. But uh, you probably wouldn't consider it as food. So what's the difference between a dog and a pig? Can you, can you explain that to me? I don't really know, okay? I'm just going to guess here. Uh, there's no difference except for the uh, pig is a higher evolved life form. So it's probably better that you eat a dog than for you to eat a pig. Sorry, okay? But hey, with at least a dog, you can go and cuddle and blah, 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 and just like, you can also do that with a pig. And it's just as impractical to cuddle with a dog than with a, with a pig. Why are you cuddling with a, with a, with an animal? Okay, well, whatever, you're doing that, that's fine. So what's the difference between eating a, a dog and a, and, a, and a pig? Can you tell me that? What's the difference? There is no difference. There is no difference because, uh, well, I don't really know why. People have put uh, pigs inside of factory farms and they're being farmed in, in the billions. So there's a, statistically there's 100 billion animals being killed every year. Imagine if golden retrievers were to be put in some factory farms and used for your everyday steaks. Okay? I know this sounds a little bit harsh, but I went to the grocery store yesterday and I'm looking at the nice fruit aisle and I'm walking past the fruits like, wow, this is cool. And then I look and there's one big aisle was just uh, pigs. It was like the legs of pigs, you know, it was like one of those big kind of uh, thing you can grab with your hand. It's like that. And there was, t there was like layers of them, you know, in, in rows. So, you know, the, someone had to have like a huge uh, a feast of a slaughter. Had to slaughter probably like uh, uh, a thousand or maybe let's say a hundred pigs just to make that happen because that's not just in that grocery store, it's in every grocery store. So Porky was just turned into four legs and two of his legs are in this grocery store, two of his legs, le legs are in the other grocery store. And you're eating that. Insane, you're insane, sorry, okay? I don't know how else to put it. You're all insane. So I'm looking at this guy and he's eating, uh, he's eating little uh, ham and I'm thinking, wow, that's crazy. That's not a nice lifestyle to live. And why is that? Is it because I'm hating on him or because I'm mean or I'm, I'm angry? No, it's not like that. Imagine this, okay? I know this firsthand from my own experience. I grew up with a with a stepfather. They're, they call it a stepfather. Not a stepfather. What is a step? Is he a stepladder to something? A father but steps? What? What is that? So he it was some guy that was dating my mom, okay? Let's just say it like that. But he pretended to be my father. He wanted to be my father. He told me to call him father or dad. And I'm like, okay. I was a little kid. I didn't really know what to do. So let's, let's just pretend the, he's my stepfather for all of you to understand. He's my stepfather, right? But he's not my stepfather. Genetically, biologically, he's a foreigner to me. He's a stranger. He's a biological stranger. Yet I'm living with him. And I'm a sen very sensitive being. And I'm living with him and I noticed that my energy was... I'm, I'm degrading my own energy, my own life, in order for him to, his energy to kind of go into me because he wants to take control of me, take control of my life. He thinks he's better than me, wiser than me, or he thinks he's, because he's older than me, he has to dictate my life, or you have to go to school, or you have to go get a job, or you have to move out of the house. Okay, not smart. So, 
I lived with this, this biological stranger for some years and again, the energy of his, the memory of his body, it was rubbing against my memory. We didn't physically touch each other when you get it. It's not like I hugged him or anything. It wasn't like that. But just the sheer presence of living in the same house and him, him communicating with me and him releasing his energy into me. Like, you know, he'd say something to me. I'm like, oh God. And uh, that energy would, would literally go into me. I'm like, oh Jesus. At some point I realized it's just better if I drop my defenses fully completely and let him, uh, you know, like almost like let him take charge of me or let him like, uh, you know, like Pinocchio, you have this little thing in your, uh, you can control this puppet. So I thought, okay, it's safer for me to have him be under my, uh, have me be under his control because then it's like I'm part of him and he won't scream at me as much or he won't be like evil to me or whatever. He was he was a normal guy when he was I didn't have, suffer my childhood like you know some people would tragically suffer. I I ate, I slept, no one physically bothered me, but emotionally there was a lot of kind of confusion because you are delusional beings. I lived with delusional beings. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so the energy rubbed off on me and I absorbed a lot of his energy and still I, I'm still struggling to kind of shed this away from me. So it's so tra traumatic, it's so tragic. This is what Sadhguru says is called the Runana Bandha. It's in yoga, it's a yogic term. So right now I'm sitting on this, uh, this uh, rock and after I leave, this rock will very subtly be imprinted onto me. The memory of this rock, the energy of this rock will be coming in contact with my body. It's coming in contact with me. Yet it's a very simple energy. I could just shut it within a one or two seconds consciously. Now I have this, this ability. Similarly, this water has memory. It has its own kind of quality. If I drink it, it'll become me. Similarly, these shoes, okay, it's me. It's my shoes. I've really embodied them into my life. If I were to give them to you and you would start to wear them, you would embody, embody my qualities. My qualities would seep into you. However much energy is in these shoes, they would uh, literally start becoming like you. So you're going out and sleeping with all these people, all these women. You're also, you know, becoming like them. You're, you're, uh, uh, you're imbibing their qualities. Now, as it relates to meat and uh, what I saw this person eating a ham, I saw that this little porky also has a quality. Okay, it's a living thing. It has its own distinct personality. Like every dog has its own personality. Some pigs are funny. Some pigs are... Uh, joyful, some pigs are very smart, some pigs are very lazy, some pigs are very uh, aggressive, just like just like in you know nature, everything everything is like that. There's a fantastic YouTube video that you should all watch. It's called Carnism. It's like why you can't differentiate between a pig, a chicken, and a cow versus a labradoodle or other animals or uh, you know or something else. Simply because you've just been conditioned over the years. This is how it is. This is food. This is food. This is not food, buddy. Okay, use your intelligence here. So if you're eating this little ham, this little porky, first of all, I get this, that you're not just eating one little porky, you're not eating porky. You're eating porky and then Johnny and Billy and Hammy and uh, Booby and whatever else. And what other uh, 10 pigs are you eating in these little 10 slices of ham? It's not just one, one pig, okay? So all the memory, all the intelligence, all the, the energy, you need to understand this is actually a physical thing. The, their, their DNA, their memory, that's the best word to say it, their memory, the quality of they are, who they are, is going into you. You physically cannot process meat. It is impossible. I don't care who you are, if you're the toughest, strongest, most powerful human being on this planet Earth, you cannot properly digest meat. I don't care who you are. If you're the Buddha, if you're God, you know, Jesus Christ, or if you're Sadhguru, if you're me, if I eat meat, barely anything is used up. Or, okay, a lot of it is used up, but a lot of it is going to waste. And the traumatic events that this happens, it's like, oh, it's not an accident that the wisest spiritual leaders on the planet choose to go vegetarian or vegan. Or when a person becomes spiritually aware, they go on a vegan diet. You know, like some of you fools uh, messaging me like, oh, you know, I'm eating meat and blah, blah, blah. It's maybe not spiritual, blah, blah, blah. You're going to like, you know, secretly you're going to eat meat. Like, hello, buddy. I'm just not doing the thing that's painful for me, okay? I've stopped hitting myself on the head. So eating this porky, it's coming into you and you're taking on the qualities, you're imbibing its qualities. You cannot process them. You cannot digest them. You cannot eliminate them from your life. So you will literally become like that. You will literally become like porky and piggy and poopy and whatever other pigs that you, you just consumed. So what does this mean? Well, it means like, it's like you have glasses and they're very wide and you can see everything. And then you just kind of shrunk the, you, you lowered your glasses. 
So your perception is di greatly diminished. Why? Because a lot of your effort, a lot of your energy has to be used in order for you to consume food, for you to just consume the most damaging, most traumatizing thing you've just consumed, and also the most thing that requires the most amount of energy to break down. So for example, this video is going to be whatever, how many minutes? If I record this video for it to be an hour long and then I tried uploading to YouTube, okay, forget about it. It's going to take like two hours. 10 minute video, pretty fast. Shh. One minute video or YouTube short, 30 seconds, poof, it's on YouTube. Just like this. This is how food is. So me eating a plant-based whole food a vegan diet, which is currently what I'm eating, I, you know, it's very easy for me to stay alive. It's very easy for me to live. It's very easy for me to think. It's very easy for me to express my emotions. It's very easy for me to, uh, you know, use my intelligence. It's very easy for me to work, you know, make these YouTube videos. It's very easy for me to walk around. And most importantly, I have a clean conscience. I'm not eating dead animals. I'm not participating in that whole trauma of these animals, the, the torture and the horror that they go through also. That's a different video. You know, you should definitely uh, watch that and Google that. So here's the deal, okay? If you're watching me and you're still eating meat, too bad, so sad. You don't have the eyes to perceive this. So, so sorry. But inevitably, you're going to change. It's not possible. It's like you can't go back to delusion. Not, you can't go back to delusion. It doesn't work like that. So once you see the light, either you're going to try to resist the light, but inevitably your body, your body, your brain, your whole spirit is ultimately always going towards the light. Can't help it. So I'm light. This is what I'm dispensing to you, light. Now, would I like to eat meat? Um, yeah, probably, you know? Like sometimes I go eat, order a, a food from Domino's and then I, I smell the smell of like chicken wings. Chicken wings is my favorite, okay? I'm like, ooh, because I can't, literally cannot physically would consume beef or it's like, too, it's too much. It's like, Jesus, I, don't, I cannot physically comprehend how you eat that or how anyone can eat that. Pig is a little bit less extreme, but okay, I can, uh, sometimes like, uh, maybe I can imagine myself eating some bacon, like, okay, it's a little bit greasy, but still, I envision what it is. Chicken is kind of very easy, very simple life form, but still very traumatic. And fish is much less, it's much easier to eat fish. So like chicken wings, yeah, it tastes great, you know, all the sauces and things. But I want you to get this, it's not because of the sauciness of the, it's not because of the actual chicken itself. Because if you just boil chicken and you go eat chicken, it's like stale, it's like um, you can barely eat it. So you have to dress it up with all sorts of uh, vegetables and plant matter and, and seasoning and everything else. So you're gonna have to mask the smell uh, and mask the scent of uh, the, the dead uh, corpse that you're just basically consuming with all sorts of uh, flavorful dressings and plant dressings and herbs and spices and basically things that are natural for a human being to eat. So please stop eating uh, dead corpses. It's not really nice. Uh, corpses need to be buried or don't make corpses in the first place. You know, uh, Animals deserve to live just as much as you and I do. And God didn't give you a free reign to, hey, go chop these beings' heads off. That's not wise, it's not respectable, that's not kind, it's not compassionate, it's not good for your heart. Looking at you, Okay, if you're eating meat, it's not good for your heart. You go take a look at your heart center, your heart space right now, put your hands on your heart and think, uh, am I okay with myself uh, with being in this? Maybe your first a little lie to yourself. Yeah, it is. And maybe you're, you're fine. Right now you are. But if you start to dig deeper, if you start to uh, meditate, if you start to practice Vipassana, no chance, okay? You cannot avoid this reality. You cannot escape this because if you're doing the wrong thing and you start meditating, the wrong things are instantly going to come up into your consciousness. They're like, oh God, this is wrong. I know this is wrong. Why do I do this? Why is this? Why is all this? So the wrong actions always get stored in your heart. Once you've purified all of the wrong actions, you have a pure heart, you're enlightened. That's all that there is to say. Ladies and gentlemen, stop eating meat. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye. Shambhu.